okay so in the previous video we have already built the constructor and in this one we are going to be building a copy constructor and then we will proceed further to building a function that can uh, you know add a fully connected layer to this neural network so uh, let's proceed but before then let me just uh, talk about this network.h that we have built in previous videos uh, i had made a mistake here so if you can just go back and see let me just delete this i was testing out this library before i was building this video so i have commented all of these things out and then one thing that i omitted in the previous video was this vector right i wrote this this data type for all these variables which would be wrong because we will have to store uh, the same data type for multiple layers so it will be a vector of these things we have initialized it properly but we didn't initialize it here in the header file so yeah uh, that's it and <coughs> if you caught that in the previous video uh, yeah okay. it's very good and if you didn't then no problem so let's just make a copy constructor so a copy constructor basically what it does is it will copy its content from other object from the same of the same data type so a syntax it, it will take const network type object network and the reference to that object and so we have this here now let's just proceed to building this okay so this is very easy what you have to do is just write network network and the syntax let's just name this copy and okay so the layer inputs of this particular layer will be set to copy dot layer inputs the same goes for layer weights it will be set to copy dot layer weights and we we'll just have to continue this for layer activations so it will be set to copy dot layer activations and we have activation which will be set to copy dot activation okay so we have all these important functions so another reason why we have not copied the layer sigmas and layer gradients is because these will be calculated every time we run forward and backward pass so that does not need to be copied so we have all these things here okay now let's start building the basic building blocks of our neural network library so the first function we are going to be building is called add fc layer which will which stands for add a fully connected layer to this network so it will have a return type but let's just not worry about it well we will decide if it will have a return type or not maybe it will be a void function let's just build this so this new c++ uh, the, the new syntax that c++ uh, allows from c++ 14 onwards is the auto return type so you can just write auto and it will automatically reduce the return type during the runtime and you don't have to worry about you know uh, determining the return type uh, before just compiling so let's name our function add fc layer fc and l are in uppercase so uh, it will also take a tuple or tuple depending on how you call it of integer and integer okay. which will basically be the sizes <laughs> so we have declared the function here uh, let me just add a semicolon and let's define the function here so yeah let's just do that so the syntax is first you write the return type and then access the class function which is add fc layer okay. and let's just name this the size of the layer that you are trying to add okay so first of all 
we need to calculate uh, the width basically the dimension of uh, the input ma the, the parameter matrix that's the weight matrix so let's just do that So the weight matrix, uh, well, let me just get this clear. So in this library, we are going to be treating well, well, the input, the data set will be treated as follows. Each of the row of the data set will be treated as a particular data point instead of columns. So that will make sure that, that will arise a lot of complications or just one complication that is we'll have to add the bias layers, the bias values and remove the, the bias values during the back propagation and we have to add the bias values during the forward propagation so the only caches that we are going to be using each row as the in each data point not each column so different libraries use different techniques so yeah that's it so <coughs> the width of the weight well weight is basically the input times weight gives you the output so the weight uh, for this layer will be the second part of the the second dimension of the size you if you are familiar with the calculations of the neural networks you can just do it with on a pen, pen and paper and the height of that will be arma dot size layer inputs at layer Inputs size is one and the next one. So, what it's doing is basically uh, the armor dot size. What this does is it calculates the size of an Ar armadillo matrix. So, our weight will be of size uh, height plus one into width. So, height plus one uh, because we have to accommodate the space for bias units so that we will add that later so but what this means is basically let's say you have a data and to get the output you have to multiply the data into weight so let's say the data is of size 3 by 4 and you and your weight is has to be of the size you know 4 by x to accommodate this matrix multiplication so the first the first dimension of the weight that is the height of the weight is basically the second dimension that is the width of this particular layer the data so that's why the width is here like this and the height should be uh, the of the previous layer so that is why oh sorry i just messed it up <laughs> completely so the height is this one's right so height should be same as the width of the previous layer so this is what we are getting here height and that is equal to the width of the previous layer so we are calculating the width of the previous layer using armadillo dot size function and the height is provided by the user here so that's it it sounds really complex but once you uh, try to match the dimensions on pen and paper you will just get that it's very easy okay so let's just quickly add the layer uh, at the input layer okay so layer inputs dot pushback and by the way this is the reference operator so if you're not familiar with this you can just search it on the internet it's basically dereferencing and accessing at the same time double and then very straightforward so we'll just get this first size and first dimension and again the second dimension to get one size okay so basically we just copied this entire size and we have created a matrix of that size and we have pushed it back into the layer input so we are adding a new layer altogether that's it now let's create a weight matrix so we matrix of double and let's name it weight and then this dimension will be height plus one 
width I missed a semicolon here I guess yeah and okay so let's initialize this weight for this layer so I'll be uh, well generally you initialize the weights using a random value but uh, I read a paper which proved that initializing using this particular formula uh, makes sure the layer converges much faster so if you want you can initialize it randomly but I'm going to be using this formula for initializing it so the formula I was 4 into sqrt sqrt which means the square root of 6 divided by height plus 1 into width height plus 1 by width basically the parameter with the dimensions of this uh, layer so yeah so initialize we will initialize the random random number generator using this particular random value so distributing parameter let's just call it dist parameter will be of we'll just cast this to double uh, 4 into sqrt double of 6 divided by height plus 1 by width okay so we have got our distribution parameter here and let me just create a generator that is default random engine So default random engine is a C++ default random generator engine. So, which the name itself suggests. So, now let's use another built-in feature of C++ that is uniform random random generation. So, let's just use this uniform real distribution. Let's use all the default parameters. And let's just call it distribution so we'll create our own distribution so it will range from minus dist param to plus dist param and let's finally initialize our weights so for auto i is equals to weight dot begin we are using the stl iteration here well i is not equal to weight dot end and i plus plus okay uh, was i yeah now let's de set the reference value of i to distribution see if I have got any typo here okay distribution and our distribution takes one object that is the generator itself so let's pass in the generator okay now finally let's append the layer weights push back this particular weight okay so we have this function here so I know this has been a long one and it's not very trivial to understand this but well if you just look at this function and what is doing just try to concentrate on that you will really get that so let me just walk you through that once again so what we are doing here is basically we are saying that we need to multiply data times weights so what this function add fc layer does is it will add uh, the push back the layer size and then it will also in, uh, basically in the input layer and then it will, it will also create a matrix weight and it will calculate the size of that weight on itself so the size of the weight should be equal to uh, as you can see here uh, the width 
the width should be equal to the uh, second dimension of the layer of the data itself and the height should be equal to the second dimension of the previous layer so that's what we are doing here we are calculating the height from the previous layer and width is the second dimension of the data itself this is basically linear algebra matrix multiplication nothing else now we could have just initialized this weight using random vari random uh, number generation generator all the random numbers uniform distribution if you like but what we chose was this generator that distribution that ranges from minus dist param to plus dist param and where dist distribution parameter dist param stands for distribution parameter is basically this calculation okay so it is because in some papers it, it has been written that initializing it, uh, it using a particular seed gen uh, of random generation can make sure the layer converges much faster so this is the theory behind it and finally after initializing the weight we will add that to the layer weights okay so i'll test this function out if i have got any errors and then in the next video we are going to be building uh, much more of this neural network thank you for watching and stay tuned